anyway, for this session, I would like you to dream. Uh, it's a session about WASM and also DuckDB. If you've heard about WASM, you kind of know what it is, but you don't really know its use case of analytics uh, and especially what DuckDB has to bring within the WASM ecosystem, then this session is for you. Um, so easily the Quack and Code session is happening every other week. Um, so this week we have a, also a guest, uh, Christoph, that's going to join us uh, quickly. And basically the goal is to have an informal chat about the topic, the technical topic, and then basically dive into codes. Uh, so we will have uh, a small demo and you can also uh, feel free to uh, basically code along. And uh, if you're live, uh, please say hi in the comment and tell me where you're coming from and if it's also uh, super cold on your side. So is there people over there? Yes, I see some comment coming. And so we are also uh, live streaming from Twitter. I never actually did that. So this is also a test. Uh, but we are on LinkedIn, uh, YouTube. Okay, Jordan from Florida. Hi. Yeah, I know, I know. It's it's um, it's just that it's pretty it's pretty cold. I get I get easily easily cold. Uh, so so yeah, that's that's the thing. Uh, someone is asking what's the what's with the hat. Uh, I have too many hats, as. Uh, as people can tell, there is a there is a, a legend that says, "You know how many hats I have by uh, the time you've been working with me, because you get to see them and count them over time." Anyway, um, I welcome my guest. Uh, I don't know, I did a lot of things wrong uh, for this live stream, and I see the overlay background is not right. This is better, and there we have uh, Christoph. Welcome. Thank you for the invitation. I'm so happy to be here. And no worries, like mistakes happen every time. Like. <laughs> yeah, so, so the thing what happened exactly, if you want to know, is that if you click on the, on, the, on the live stream event and you stream and you stop the event because I was like, oh, let's not go live right now, then it basically just consider these events is closed and there is no reason why you should go back online. And so. Basically, the event created might be people might yeah. be confused, but uh, I, I remember I did uh, this once with StreamYard. Like, yeah, I fucked it up as well once. So I bent. Yeah. So we have also someone from Toulouse. So you have some uh, French friends, right? Because uh, Christophe is French. I'm not French, by the way. Uh, I do have a French accent, but please, uh, not everybody that speaks French is French, right? Be careful with your shortcuts. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I'm not going to say anything. Anyway. But Christophe, please uh, introduce a bit yourself uh, for, for the audience, for people that actually doesn't know you. So, hey, people. Um, so I'm Christophe Blefari. I'm French. Um, I've been graduated years ago uh, in software engineering, but since I've started working, I'm mainly doing data engineering. Uh, I would say that I'm a data engineer, software engineer, I don't care actually, but I do data engineering mainly. Um, I'm passionate about a lot of things, I would say, but in my free time, I mainly do like uh, video games. Um, I bike. Uh, I as well started back running like in August uh, last year. So I uh, run a lot like four times a week, something like this. Wow. And yeah. Even with and that actually, cold? Yeah, so right now, so I'm in Paris, so it's not cold, it's just rainy, raining. But um, right now I have an excuse because I got a tendinite uh, and so I cannot run anymore. <laughs> so in the last 10 days, I didn't, I didn't you don't, run. You don't need to tell me an excuse. It's it's fine. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't run with it. It's, 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 too, it's too cold. I mean, it's it's even dangerous. Like Actually, there, there is like... actually this is like the, the, the Berlin proverb that, that there is no cold. There is just like bad clothes. 
<laughs> yeah, indeed. So maybe that's uh, that's why I wear, I'm wearing this hat. Uh, but anyway, and also what you didn't mention, like Christoph is writing an amazing uh, newsletter, uh, which oh, yeah. is called the uh, Data News, and that's actually how we get to know each other. I think in the show, you right because we were both writing uh, data engineering content. Uh, really great newsletter. Um, you spend a lot of time on that, and it's a bit on a break. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes. Um, so you, you can find my newsletter on my uh, personal website slash blog. Uh, it's on blef.fr. I guess you have like maybe fucked up as well the assets. So we have no name, but yeah. So it's my, 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 my pseudo. Um, and uh, the newsletter is weekly. Uh, I started it again like two weeks ago. So it's not on break right now. <laughs> it was on break on December. Um, and the idea of the newsletter is to do a curation about everything that is going on in the data ecosystem. So I, I, I curate articles in data engineering, analytics engineering, um, data science and data analysis. And the idea is like just to give to people like the best articles that have been written in the last week with uh, spicy opinion and with my uh, French sarcasm, which is something that people <laughs> like actually. <laughs> this is like one of the, 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 the feedback I get uh, the most, which is like, uh, yeah, we like your tone and, and your uh, French sarcasm. So yeah. That's something natural, <laughs> but uh, I continue to do it uh, uh, like this. Cool. No, but uh, it's definitely really good written. Um, so I strongly recommend it. I'm actually not following that much, uh, I would say, uh, data engineering newsletter. Um, but I think one you is, is definitely one I would uh, I would recommend a specific. Just one on question: do, do you? follow it like by email like you receive the email or you have like a rss uh, feed <laughs> uh i do i have an email for uh forward i use okay, uh, okay. readwise you know so okay it, uh, basically it's managing um, it helps you manage your newsletter that you receive by mail and i have also rss feed there but i think yours is just connected to to my email uh okay so that's your question yeah, well, we have even like, people from, yeah. uh, sorry, uh, from Brazil, just because it's, uh, you know, some people are, are bragging about the ter their temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. That's quite cool for a standard. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyway, Wasm, let's, let's get into it because uh, we are already a bit uh, late with the agenda. Um, so Boo actually knows, like, in the audience, like, what WASM stand for? I'm curious, like where does actually people heard of it for the first time? Can you can you tell us, like uh, Christoph, where where did you heard WASM actually for the first time? Mm, probably related to video game, actually. Like, um, you know, at yeah, I stopped it recently, but at some point I was like. Uh, on Hacker News, like in my life, I was on Hacker News like every two hours. Like it was like too damn. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was <laughs> wasting so many, so many hours on it. And you know, like uh, all the the translation of old video games into the browser uh, in Wasm, like do um, yeah. Mario and stuff. Uh, every time they do like the front page of Hacker News, and maybe that's how I knew about it uh, the first time maybe five years ago something like this like uh, yeah on the first uh, translation with doom stuff like this yeah yeah indeed so wasm stand actually for web apps assembly for people that doesn't know and uh and basically it's mostly used for speeding up web application uh by allowing them to run code written in multiple language Usually, it's run into uh, low-level language like C++, C, or Rust. Uh, there is other also interface, and as I think Golang too. I've seen that. Uh, that's 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 the most common. Um, but yeah, it's actually started. Do you know when when it's gonna when it started? That's I would say it started like with maybe the 
HTML5 like specification. So I would say uh, 2005, something like this, 2007. I don't know. I didn't look. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, way, way, way later, actually. The first oh, okay, version okay. was uh, actually in 2017. So it's only oh, okay, six okay. years ago. Yeah, I think it's probably the GA. Uh, you know, those kind of things uh, take times to like they, they get a lot of intention before getting GA. Uh, so yes. that's why probably you heard it uh, before, like the same with HTML5. Um, so that, that that's kind of thing. Um, but the thing, so I have a couple of. Uh, so we understand so far that uh, WASM is basically a way to. Uh, run something in the browser with other type of language. It's pretty lightweight. Um, I have a couple of use cases here I want to discuss. Uh, let's dive into. I have a couple of articles. Just, just one screen. question, maybe yeah? uh, I, I'm I'm mistaken, but uh, wasn't to me is not a way to run something in the browser in another language. It's more like a port of something. Yeah, it de it depends, but uh, it's like. Uh, a port of another languages in the browser. So like uh, when you have like a, a specific library, it has been like translated into like compiled, not translated, but compiled uh, into JavaScript within the browser. So it emulates kind of uh, your yeah. um, lang language behavior, but actually it runs in JavaScript, not um, in, the, in the language mm -hmm. you, you want to run it, I guess. Uh, maybe I'm mistaken, but um, on the target, like so works. yeah, on the target. So I'm not a JavaScript, neither a WASM expert. Uh, the way I understand it is that it's basically a mini VM that's running in your browser. Uh, there is there is a JavaScript interface to the WASM compiler, but WASM can be run actually somewhere okay. else on edge or uh, in a container. And so this is actually one of my articles I want to share. Um, let me grab that. Uh, so for people that have been using um, uh, Docker, let me share my screen. Um, so yeah, so Docker has introduced actually the usage of was mean technical preview. Um, that was when that was that was a couple of months ago. Okay, let's see it dates. Uh, uh, let me zoom out. And um, and basically, they, they explain also um, why uh, what is WASM. Um, so they, they mostly said that they explain it that uh, it's run into enable you to run in different language in a sandbox environment. And they give you also examples. So Figma that I know is a big user uh, of uh, yeah. WASM. Photoshop, it's like the, because Photoshop has a web version, uh, I believe, um, and and Disney Plus apparently. So there is a lot of company already using it. So the point is that indeed it's, only, it's, it's not only running in our browser, but this is where we mostly see a lot of improvement, right? Because we have a lot of uh, AV application like uh, Figma is, is one of them, right? Um, so that's a that's a way basically to speed up things, and so it's really interesting. You can go over there. I'm not going to go over the detail here, um, but basically they explain how they integrated with the the Docker engine and why they, they 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 did it, and you can also start to play it and basically run uh, a Wasm container in a in a specific language. Uh, so really looking forward where this. Um, this is gonna head. I don't know if you heard of that or not. Before. No, no, no. But it looks, uh, yeah, I have so many ideas with this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm curious if any of the audience have heard of that because uh, so the article is uh, I cannot figure out. It's still it's it's a couple of months. Ah, okay, so the date is there. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's still pre it's already pretty old. Uh, it wasn't technical preview, so I'm not sure what's the the state right now. But it's it's, it's a year yeah. behind. Maybe they dropped the idea for, for a different reason. Uh, but the point is that there, there is a lot of uh, exploration around this. So another thing uh, I want to 
talk, and it's probably, I mean, you talked about that, that you heard was um, around a video game topic. Um, and so this is, have you heard of WebGPU? Yeah, I've seen this. I, I didn't read it, but I have it in my uh, yeah. Um, so web bookmarks. Yeah. So basically, WebGL is an old standard uh, to access GPU capabilities within your browser. Um, yeah. And basically, uh, what WebGPU does is uh, tapping. You, it basically enable you to tap you directly um, into more low level of your GPUs. And why is that? Uh, related to WASM uh, is because if your browser have better interface to your graphic cards for, let's say, training models, and if WASM enable you to have sandbox environment to have uh, enable you to train a model within just a browser URL, so everything is running locally, not on the server side. And so there is also TensorFlow.js uh, that exists, right? So. I guess some people, hopefully we have data people um, on live here, but basically the tensorflow.js is, uh, is a web assembly version to uh, be able to run a TensorFlow on the edge. Uh, so you would train or inference a model in your browser on the edge. So you can imagine that within a neural well, someone gets basically all the package needed to train a model without installing anything and on top of that we've that's where i'm doing the link with web gpu it could tap directly into your hardware uh, gpu um, and so that's basically lower the technical barrier to entry for for a lot of application right um, yeah. because today if you want to train your model uh, classically and using the full power of gpu you, you're going to run python locally and so on and train something does that talk to you or not, Christoph? Yeah, it talks to me, but uh, I guess like the the main limitation on this, like accessing, because there, there have been always like a huge debate in the HTML community from what I've uh, seen around the access of the uh, computer resources, you know, and yeah. having like a tab that has access to your GPU or Kind of Seem, seems freaking to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I'm not a huge fan to be honest. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, I mean, but, the browser but, tab is already eating all your your CPU. So why not yeah. give it to them away the GPU? But anyway, yeah, also right. the result, everything related to games you were mentioning with Doom and so on. Yeah, but yeah. I think we we're gonna see a lot of like really powerful game, just like three D game running in the browser. So. Uh, I'm really excited about that. I think this is really still early. WebGPU was released, I think, uh, yeah. uh, middle next year by Chrome. And so you have time that other browser also support this. But this is going, clearly, there is a lot of uh, signal that is going into, uh, into that direction. So um, that's for kind of the introduction around uh, WASM and the use case. Now, let's and narrow it down there, to just the, analytics. There is something just yep. to... To, sorry to interrupt you, but just to no, no, go ahead. Put maybe in, in, in the concept, like th there is something that has been made. Uh, that the, the reason like uh, WebAssembly uh, is going to be a thing in the future is that at the moment, uh, our like uh, laptops and computer and just our work laptops have like a lot of resources, have a lot of capabilities. So we, we, we get more power than before, like in our um, uh, home computers or work computers and so that that's crazy because uh, we don't need a server like we needed before because for a lot of yeah. people for instance when you have like a m1 uh, macbook uh, maybe your macbook has more like cpu and memory than the server you develop on like the remote server you develop on so it's crazy because it yeah. means that we can do so many things locally no that's true thanks for for the reminder is that Everything that basically enables you to do some compute locally and within your browser within, without installing anything and tapping into your GPU is because our current machine are, are way stronger 
and uh, we are mostly using it for browsing. Like if you look like just the basic MacBook Air uh, now, which is like not that expensive if you compare like 10 years ago, um, and the yeah. power that this machine has is just is just crazy. Um, so I think we are just scratching the surface. Like at the moment, it's not this compute is not is not really leveraged, and um, there's our path to to go there. I have a question here on YouTube. Are GPUs well suited for the kind of workload of DuckDB has? Well, not really. We're not leveraging um, uh, GPUs, um, but uh, as far as I know, it, I, I may say some stu uh, something stupid. It's more analytics uh, workload. I think uh, GPUs are way more interesting if you need to train model. Uh, that's like the classic use case, uh, at least on the data side. Let's narrow it down to now we talked about general use case on WASM, um, web GPU, and so on. Uh, we did discuss uh, a one uh, data use case with TensorFlow. Um, but regarding analytics, so what's your what's your your thoughts today on WASM and analytics? I mean, apart from DuckDB, and then we'll dive directly in DuckDB. Um, I, I think it relates like uh, to just to what I just said. Actually, like the fact that in 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 our browser we can access to our local uh, macbook m1 m2 s m3 uh infinite when i say infinite it's compared to like a a, a small machine we run on ec2 uh, infinite infinite power um opens the door like to to, to decentralize, I would say, uh, like maybe the world is this one, uh, to decentralization in terms of uh, analytics. I mean, at, at the moment, what, what we have, if we look at uh, data platforms, uh, we have like two ways, I would say. We have data warehouses and we have data lakes. For instance, lake yeah. house to me is like a data lake because you know, it's just like a vocabulary, but in the end, it's like uh, files on, on, a, on, on blob uh, or on cloud storages. So, you have like data lakes and, and, and warehouses. And the issue with those two is that you have uh, in the cloud to pay for some uh, for some compute. If uh, we find a way to be like clever with the usage of the uh, analytics in the browser with Wasm, I guess companies who can save a lot of money in terms of like, um, uh, data data compute actually because uh, yeah. co companies have like uh, good uh, computers good laptops maybe good like I, I don't know but they have like good uh, stuff and if you are clever in the way you access data in the way you ask the query uh, you can sometimes avoid like querying like databricks snowflake big query uh, or yeah maybe Mosaic but you, you you can find a, a clever way like to avoid calling like the remote data platform and um, and doing the compute locally. And that's crazy like to, 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 to think about it and to to see that it opens like many doors, I guess. Yeah, but there is a challenge, right? The, the architecture is not so obvious because then you're like, yeah, okay, but my data is going to be centralized somewhere. And you know we put so much effort to put it in the cloud. The goal is not to put all your data locally, um, but and how to to avoid uh, you know uh, network traffic and so on. Um, and regarding that, so actually let's let's dive into uh, DuckDB. So there is a couple of use cases today. Um, I can name, uh, for example, there there is multiple uh, notebook style. Um, Data vis tool or other type of tool. Uh, so there is, like for example, uh, let me share my screen. Why can I do? So there is, for example, um, evidence. Uh, evidence uh, is basically a way to create dashboards with just SQL and Markdown, and they, they uh, it's a it's a JavaScript framework behind the scene. And now they're using uh, DuckDB Wasm, which means that if you need to do some filtering and so on activity, 
uh, you can see uh, it here. Basically, what it does behind the scene is that there is DuckDB, which is running in your browser locally and executing those query and displaying the result um, to, uh, to you. So that's why it is super snappy, right? And the classic architecture that we have today uh, regarding data visualization tool is that they often uh, rely on server. Sometimes they're going to cache some result and some query, but they mostly cache it. They don't compute uh, things uh, things locally. Do you have other use case like that in mind that you've seen? Mm, I, I guess that one of the the, the, the most obvious one, I guess. Um, and, and just this one to, to, to go deeper, it requires uh, maybe, for, for instance, to make it um, work easily and not to get lost into a lot of uh, data sets, I guess you, you need to have like one mark with one table or like one, one big table like the OBT uh, to, 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 to have not like a big mess because if uh, in your dashboard you are creating like a lot of different data sets, I guess it's gonna be a lot of like network calls and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I like this use case. And I, I had one use case like in mind uh, regarding like this uh, decentralization and the fact that uh, you can use like Wasm the DB uh, uh, in the, in the browser, which is imagine like uh, I don't know if you know a bit about differential pri privacy, but the idea of differential privacy is like to do statistic and to do like compute KPI computing on, on top of data that has been uh, ciphered. Uh, yeah. In order, like to um, to keep anonymization and, pri and privacy and stuff, um, there, there there might be a use case in the data decentralization where, like in the in the central repository in the warehouse like house uh, data lake, you have everything that is like um, ciphered, and the only place where the stuff is ciphered is on the browser. Like uh, the the yeah. the client like reading the data is coming with like his uh, ciphering key. Like with, with with the key, and if you don't have the key, if you don't have like the um, the yeah. token, you could tie it now. You could tie a specific hardware to yes, to who's gonna that's be key, can you have the, and the, that's the, all. The key, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, no. So the the in terms of security too, yeah, there is a, like like you mentioned, uh, but again, it's like okay, how do you minimize the traffic and so on? Yeah. Um, and so just like. Uh, also, a small plug, uh, Mother Duck uh, released uh, their uh, research paper uh, uh, from CIDR. Um, and you just released a blog about it. Uh, if you go to motherduck.com blog, um, but basically it talks about the hybrid compute mode where we try to leverage as much as possible to make it simple in simple word. Yeah. Your local compute or the cloud in concert. But the thing I'm pointing here is that there is a lot of research that needs to to be done. Basically, still, uh, it's still like they, we see the possibilities, but um, product are are really just uh, starting. And that, that's what I said at the beginning of the session, right? I want you to dream, to walk away from this session, and to dream. So, um, yeah. And I, I think there is a lot of things to to dream about. Do you have other yeah. other ideas in mind? Um. I don't know, but th th there is just something that uh, unlocks like the all the networks and avoid uh, a lot of mess in the network, which is uh, actually parquet, uh, the parquet or parquet in English. I don't know how to say it, <laughs> um, but like uh, parquet files actually are the key actually to, to, to save like bandwidth, to save uh, a lot of stuff because like you can do like the, the colon selection, the push down predicate, yeah. like for the where. Uh, and everything that is related, thanks to Parquet. Um, I, I guess that's uh, something that's uh, going to change in the in the in the following uh, years. Um, and yep. maybe one day we're going to get rid of CSVs everywhere and stuff like that. <laughs> but we can, um, we can. It's like uh, it's like uh, Excel, you know. It's, I think it's uh, it's yeah. meant to stay there. Uh, I, I guess it's a bit different, for, but. For... Yeah. I guess we, we yeah. have to get rid of CSV like in the inter intermediary part because like on the source part, yeah, okay, I don't care. But uh, like in the middle, we, we have to get rid of it. Yeah, cool. Um, 
we are going now to uh, dive in something a bit more uh, hands on. And so, uh, Christoph, you show. So, Christoph, show a demo, a really neat demo at uh, at a meetup. Uh, and that's like that's why also I wanted to to cover that topic. It's using DuckDB Wasm. Um, it's not uh, for dashboard responsiveness as I, I as I show for 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 the database. It's another use case that, that I found really interesting, um, and it's it's simple to do. So it's uh, it's a Firefox extension. Um, I'm gonna show you the demo first, but first, uh, so Christoph sent me a link. With his codes, so and we say this is the current status of the code, and I'm like, yeah, sure. So you know, with, without read me, so it's kind of a challenge. Um, do you? Do I, I hope you don't handle your code at your clients like that? Uh, no, it depends actually. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing been, you. No, actually, I, I know it's a trick, but um, to be honest. Um, I don't like to read readme's, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's a challenge for me, like to 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 explain my code and explain the stuff I, I write because, yeah, I know this is yeah. one of my issues. <laughs> so I'll be uh, sharing right now. Uh, but this one for my for, for my defense, this one is like an experiment uh, and. Uh, I send it to you like just raw. Uh, I have like to, because like, I was not really like to put it like in uh, open for people. Uh, because if I if I had to put it like open, I would have like commented stuff and added like more documentation. But for the live, uh, I send it to you uh, raw because, yeah, because of lack of time. But it's fine, it's fine. I like the challenge, I like the challenge. All right, so if you want, you can um, clone the repository. Uh, and uh, and so as I said, it's, uh, it's an extension, uh, a Firefox extension. And what it does is that if you use Google Cloud Storage, you can, we can also make it easily work for uh, S3 storage. But basically what it does is that it's popping up a small window when you're hovering uh, around the file and it's showing you uh, the schema of that file. And I'm guessing maybe I'm the only one, but please don't leave me alone in the audience, in the chat. Tell me how many times did you download the parquet just to check up, you know, the schema or whatsoever? Tell me, I'm really curious. And, 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 and Christoph, did you have this use case where you just need to check a parquet of, schema what do you do yeah I, I i had it so many times that that was the reason I, I developed this stuff and i had this idea because if you just think about it um when you are in the data lake and you decide like to go for parquet or or like any binary format um every time you just want to see your file you have to download the file go into uh, python virtual long start a jupyter notebook uh, import pandas, pandas dot uh, read packet and stuff like yeah. this. Uh, it was it was before like uh, the DBRO and all the all, all the new, yeah, new yeah. stuff. That was like the journey. So, and the issue with this is that, okay, you you click on download, but the file is like one gigabyte, and you have like a bad connection. So you go for a coffee, and 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 then your your day is fucked. And you, <laughs> forgot, you forgot this, and yeah, this is like uh, that 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 has yeah. It's it's the reason I did. Yeah, no, it's a it's a it's, it's a it's a really common uh, common thing, and you might say also, uh, oh, but you know we have uh, you know a SQL engine, would it be a Tina? We have a Google catalog, so we can query it directly from there. But sometimes you have a pipeline that fail, you have uh, a wrong parquet file, SUS parquet file that you identify, and you cannot actually query it because it's messing up the schema. The SQL engine, they are applying the schema on read, right? And so the yes. problem with that is that usually you create your table based on the right schema. And so if you have a small parquet file within all your parquet file that has a wrong schema, you're basically in a problem where you have to identify this one. And so just to show uh, quickly, 
you say, of course, that was a uh, pre DuckDB era, but if you run um, just DuckDB CLI, so on Mac OS, of course, so you can uh, install, whoop, you can install DuckDB mm -hmm. just right this, right? Um, Personally, I and... recommend people to use pip to install DuckDB rather than Unbrew, but this is my advice. <laughs> uh, but this is for the CLI. You point out after the CLI is not uh, is not is not really available as far as I know with the with, Python package. With, yes, you can with the Python package. Okay, you can point it out directly, but you need to add the path. I mean, why why, no. why would I care you about should. that? It's a, it's a one line command. Are oh, you right? Oh, you're right. Okay. Um. So once you once you install um. So here. It's a bit specific. Uh, it's a bit hacky for Google Cloud Storage. Why? Because you need to set up uh, the endpoint to say that it's a Google Cloud Storage, and you see, oh, I'm setting S3 endpoint. Uh, this is initially because uh, DuckDB was supporting S3, and Google Storage came along. Um, I believe they do some work around uh, secrets, so we're gonna have dedicated secrets based on the source, will it be on S3 or Google Cloud Storage. Uh, and I guess for a configuration as well. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but basically, for the moment, you just need to set the, that and then your credential. Um, and um, here, it's a public bucket. So you can actually directly uh, read it. So this is the address of the public bucket. Uh, you can go and try it. Um, so if I do this, I basically directly can query the the data from uh, from S3. So this is really magic, right? There is nothing I need to do. And I can also um, describe uh, the table if I want just uh, uh, the schema. This is the schema within the DuckDB type. And we're going to see right now uh, what's the what's the parquet type. But you see, like, that's, that's super fast. Um, the only thing I, I would have need to do uh, is set up the credential. And note that if you are using AWS, there is also the AWS extension, so the AWS extension, and you can uh, load directly uh, your AWS credential, uh, so you don't need to to set it up anything and, and directly create, start creating your bucket. That's magic. Uh, of course, there is always a uh, network bandwidth, right? So if you target uh, uh, every um, Parquet file, it's exactly what you mentioned, Christoph. Be mindful maybe on the colon selection on uh, on your partition to prune a certain type of parquet, uh, yada, yada. Going back to our extension. So what is happening here? What is happening here? Christoph, please. Good question. Like uh, a lot of things actually. Um... I don't know if it was your first um, browser extension, but uh, it actually, was. Uh, yeah, you, without you know, a like readme, <laughs> without a readme. But I send you like the the tutorial from uh, Firefox to understand. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, still, um, yeah, in a web extension, like the stuff is a bit different than in a classic uh, web page. But what happens here mainly is that. Um, in your uh, main main web page, there is like a listener uh, on uh, the example dot packet uh, link, um, yeah. and when you over, uh, yeah, so it's not in the panel. Yeah. Yes, I guess it's uh, yeah, it's, it's here. More... Uh, it's, it's here. I did a bit of modification, and by the way, I'm oh, happy okay. to. It's a fork. I'm happy to contribute back and give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. <laughs> Because it was your idea, uh, uh, but uh, but yeah. So there is a function that uh, basically handling uh, based on uh, event. So there is a listener on yeah. event. But I, I'm not speaking mouse. about this this one. I'm sorry, I'm not speaking okay. about this one. I'm more speaking about the one in the content script. Okay. So, so for script. the panel so itself, in the main GS. yeah. So I, I'm speaking first, like about the listener on the on the link. So it's yeah. Uh, yeah this one. So so this yeah. is like the mouse the mouse over li line uh, forty eight. Um, yeah. So you 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 listen like on on the link and when you over a link, uh, it calls uh, the background of the extension which is uh, in the panel GS you just showed before. And in order to yeah. do this, uh, the way extension are working is. 
they are communicating with a message system. And so in the line 49, uh, it does like brother runtime send message. And what I do is like I send a message with the file name I want to uh, read the data from, the, the parquet schema from. And uh, on the other side, so on the panel side, um, that there is yeah. then a listener that listen for this message and then do like the DuckDB magic uh, to get all the parquet information. And to get the packet information, actually, I run a query uh, uh, on it. So if you go on the panel, index DB. yes, yeah, yeah, in DuckDB. yeah, and that's uh, like what we we can try. And so the the rest is basically this is mostly just uh, the panel that uh, that you see yeah. on the screenshots, right the pop, on the, the pop, on the pop, demo yeah. here. Um, and so so yeah, so this is the the the, the listener of the mouse, uh, and then we have basically the the logic here. Uh, which uh, basically load the uh, DuckDB WASM, uh, instantiates uh, the DuckDB database, create a connection. Here we're just logging the, the, the DuckDB version to say this is working. We'll, we'll see directly after uh, when we load the extension, the extension. The console log of Firefox. Um, then we set the... Um, the credential, uh, the endpoint, as I said, for uh, Google Cloud Storage. Uh, you don't need to put those one if you're uh, query on uh, S3. And um, and this is if you need to put some uh, some credential on private bucket. Uh, here, the bucket is is public, so we don't need to put uh, yeah. <laughs> any uh, credential. Um, and uh, here, there is a small function uh, to handle to send the query. Uh, there is the, the listener on the mouse over. And then on the mouse over, there is the function. And so this is the thing that I change a bit because uh, Christoph is like, what the hell is this? But it's just no, no. <laughs> getting the file name. It was actually uh, just uh, just missing something, um, the bracket. And then we I'm breaking out the URL of the bucket. Um, and so basically when you are on, uh, uh, on Google cloud storage, you have your URL that looks like that. And mm. actually I can't, uh, let me share that directly. Uh, so if I do go into console developer and then, uh, cloud storage, whoops. So you see here, I am on the bucket in question, and you can see that the URL is built that uh, you have actually uh, part of the URL, you have the bucket name. So this is what I'm inferring here, uh, basically to build uh, the full path. And then basically I'm doing the query. So this is kind of like the same thing that I would do from the CLI I was just doing before. And uh, actually, I still have the CLI open, so we can run uh, this query uh, here. Sorry, I have the sharing. I cannot see. <laughs> <laughs> I have the sh little sharing things, which is blocking. Uh, I, so I cannot I even help it's... you because there is like a pop up on the on the asset, so I cannot see even like the CLI. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm gonna, no I'm gonna hide this one. Yep. Uh, I mean, you are still seeing the the yes. the, the, the chart, and it's board, it, it's super nice because I'm gonna put it there. All right. So uh, basically, it's uh, this path, right? And so I have a, an extra. Uh, come on, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go there. But basically, this function is pretty similar to the describe table, but here we are getting uh really uh parquet type right this is uh the db type uh, yeah. but and we have more flexibility but uh, but roughly they're they're the same another function which is that i want to share with you um is uh summarize uh which is pretty cool because it gives you statistic directly yeah. on uh the different field uh what's the minimum maximum average and so on and so you could actually include that in your panel but 
it require a bit more compute, right? But it's, uh, it's not also not really be because uh, some of the data is already like in the in the parquet metadata, I guess. It, yes, it's... indeed. Yeah, uh, some of them, but I believe not not everything. Um, yeah. That's actually a good question. Um, I can come back on that. Anyway, so because we have nine minutes left and we need to, uh, we mostly cover everything on the code, um, I think. So yeah, the, 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 the query is there. We get the, the file path and, and that's mostly it. So you see at the end, there is not that much. There is uh, this uh, two file basically, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For, 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 for this extension, you have your manifest. The manifest is just specifying where uh, the different things here and the permission on uh, <clears throat> uh, for, for security reason. So now if we launch uh, Firefox, um, not now, no, I'm sorry, Firefox, <laughs> not yet. I'm not yet ready for that. Um, <laughs> I'm using Brave, by the way. Uh, so you could, what you could do is that if you go to um, about uh, and debugging, and then you can load temporary uh, add-on. So that's what we're going to do. And so here, this is my repository. You can pick any file, pick the manifest. And now you have uh, your extension, uh, which is load uh, for this session. All right. Um, we're going to also open the inspect. Uh, I'm going to put it there. Uh, so that will help us to debug if there is uh, a beautiful failure in the demo, which obviously there is going to be because it's a, it's a live stream and you can roast me in the comment if it's not working, right? Yeah, but so. if it's not working, it's my fault. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I got time to basically make it worse or make it better. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, so um, I'm on the page. Uh, and here you see what's going. What's happening is actually. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom that. Uh, perfect. Um, is the console log that we saw before with the DB version, right? And um, and this is you know setting that is uh, we are querying a Google Cloud Storage. It's a public bucket, so we don't need any extra credential. And what I'm gonna do, I think I just need to reload. Uh, yeah. here and reload oh. the page because probably yeah. it's not detecting it and it's not working. So as expecting. Yes. Yes, it's working. Uh, so it was just some, uh, some small event. So you see, every time I'm, I'm uh, hovering uh, over things, what I'm going is that is building the path of my file. So if I have another yeah. file here, uh, that would work to any file, but here is building. Okay, this is the bucket. This is uh, the file, and uh, and actually, let me let me do that uh, quickly. What you want to do? Oh my God, it's been a time. You, you, you want to duplicate like the file? No, I'm just gonna uh, add another file. The, and that, just the, while you are looking for a file, there, there is something yeah. very interesting, which is uh, when you get like the metadata, uh, because it's a parquet mm -hmm. file, uh, it only reads the metadata. So it yeah. uh, consumes no bandwidth. Um, and so that's what we want, actually. Like, uh, yeah, we, we, we just okay. see the schema and we, we don't consume any bandwidth. Yeah. I'm looking for, uh, okay, this one is big. I don't have a, I don't have other uh, parquet file uh, here. I could uh, <laughs> convert it uh, one day uh, data. I don't know what's this data. I have no idea what it is. We're going to see because it's we're sensitive see data. This. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not uh, <laughs> so uh, let's see. Uh, I think I need to the event again. page was not, yeah, looks like we have... no, okay, it's okay, boom. Ah, I know, is this 
it's a uh, by stats uh, by by pi ah, yeah, stats okay. data. Cool. Uh, so you have uh, for by pi, uh, so the Python library package, uh, and probably have like one day of data from a specific package. But so I uh, just wanted to see like okay, so now there is multiple file, and I just over and I have you know this uh, this working. That's that's pretty neat. So everything what it does as uh, as you said is just you see doing different. Uh, queries behind the scene uh, to DuckDB Wasm, and it's super light, super fast. So yeah, that's roughly uh, that. So if you want to try it, you can go on the GitHub repository, uh, play around. So don't forget, you need to. Uh, I'll, I'll add to the to the readme because I, I'm, I'm a good man. <laughs> Just uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll add directly, but basically on, the, on Firefox, you go to debugging, load uh, the extension, pick any files from the repository, um, and then add your, your, your inspector next to it so that you can restart uh, the, the load of the extension and, and see what, uh, what's going on. But yeah, uh, pretty so neat cool. use case. Uh, really, again, uh, thank you, uh, Christophe, for, for, for the ID. Um, what what do you want to do next with that one? I guess the the, the next step is like uh, finding some time to just uh, pushing it like to the production. I would say in quotes like just uh, putting the extension on the store. Maybe adding like a feature where when you click on the extension icon, you can add your secret key and um, access key. So yeah, I was thinking the, the same. Secret yeah. key and the the access key is not in the code. Um, and I guess make it work for S3 as well as GCS, because I, I guess a lot of yeah. people are uh, S3 users as cloud uh, storage. Um, and then maybe as well do it for Google Chrome, because maybe people are more using Google Chrome than Firefox. And yeah. I think that would be uh, enough uh, for the extension to live uh, for a few uh, months, years, I don't know, until people um, really use it. I don't know. I, I don't, yeah, it's just like. No, a, until until people maybe. implement it directly. <laughs> I mean, that's like, yeah, that's an obvious use case for Google, right? Please, Google, update your UI so that we don't need to build extension. Yeah, that's true. But I, to be honest, uh, I started like to, to build an extension when I was doing stuff on dbt. And yeah. now that I know how to build an extension, every time I, I have an issue like on the on the website, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do an extension to fix my issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's maybe uh, it's maybe a bit too much, but uh, yeah, I get the, I get the point. I think it's uh, uh, there is. I, I mean, the one I'm using is actually I'm doing the black team. Uh, what else and and other stuff, but that not actually that that much. Ah yeah, yeah. Wapel um, uh, Wapelizer. That uh, enable you to inspect the kind of uh, framework and uh, programming mm -hmm. language that the that the website is using. When I see a beautiful website, I'm like, what are they using? And so yeah, so this is okay. this is like the kind of extension I would build, like to just a nerd thing to understand uh, what's behind the scene. Anyway, we are closing uh, closing in. Uh, Christoph, thank you so much uh, for your time and. Uh, your codes. Uh, I was really just uh, bothering you with that read mean, but it's fine. Uh, I have no the fork and the link. Uh, I put, I will put this one for now because it's just a bit cleaner, but I'm happy to uh, fork it back to your main repo. So uh, let's take it a sync and yes. uh, have a beautiful day, if you were, whatever you are, or uh, a good night if you are also. A good night for us. <laughs> Yeah, in European time, it started to be 10 in the evening, so uh, a bit uh, late. See you. See you. Thanks. <laughs>